And I'll give you something kind of interesting to get us started off here. Jesus is talking about the rich man and Lazarus. And Lazarus is wanting him to, or the rich man is wanting uh, Lazarus to, uh, to go back and send, you know, send the message to my five brothers, lest they also come to hell. He said unto him, this is uh, Abraham's response, if they hear not who? Moses and the prophets. So that's the law and the prophets. If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither shall they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Literally, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees about what would happen even after his resurrection. Because ultimately, they wouldn't believe Moses and the prophets. Because Moses prophesied, and the prophets prophesied of Jesus, the Messiah. Now, Moses taught something very clearly in Genesis, that the earth was destroyed by a flood. Now, understand this is real basic, but it's going to get something really interesting. The Bible says because they would not believe Moses, neither will they believe if they believe Jesus. It is no coincidence, folks, that our boys and girls, our children, our sons and daughters, grandkids, when they go to school, when they go off to college, they go off to university, they are being inundated with the concept that there was no such thing as a creation, there was no such thing as a flood, that's all a bunch of baloney, okay? Now, why is that being taught? Well, because if they can deny Moses, they won't believe Jesus. The reason why evolution is being taught ultimately, and I believe it's the spirit of Antichrist behind it, is to get people to reject Jesus. Now, isn't it interesting that the very people that reject a universal flood are saying that there is going to be a universal flood. Now, it's been talked about for years, and they're starting to get quieter and quieter because 2012 has finally arrived. By December, though, you'll guarantee this will be brought up again based on the Mayan and Aztec Indians that, they, that the world will have an upheaval and there will be mass destruction. It was based on a movie called 2012, and you can see the poster there on the right where one of the warships is ready to be, you know, uh, tumble down on the White House, and on the left is uh, uh, the tallest mountains, uh, the Himalayans where it's being covered by water. Now it's so funny to me that this is the same group, Hollywood, that rejects Moses' teaching of the universal flood. But they teach this. Now here's the crazy thing. Jesus said, if they don't believe Moses, they won't believe me. What else did Moses teach? Well, Moses taught that God created man. However, Evolution teaches just the opposite. <clears throat> this is why today, <clears throat> if you talk to an average young person, an average college student, you are considered pretty out of it if you still believe that uh, the Bible's account of creation is true. Matter of fact, it is even popular among Christian and in ministers today that the Bible is not really given a full account of creation. That's all an allegory. Okay. Obviously, the Bible teaches Jesus said there was a guy named Adam with his wife named Eve. Jesus said that. Remember the Bible talks about that? If they reject that, they're not going to re- they're going to not believe in me. Now, let me just say, show you why I'm I'm saying all that. There's a new movement going on right now and it's just kind of in its infant stage. It's kind of get, slowly getting more and more popular. There's a way to get around God creating the world. It was created, in fact, by a master race of aliens. And these aliens, believe it or not, according to some of these people, are going to be coming back. And they're going to be coming back this year. Okay. Now, it's interesting that the gentleman you see right now is probably one of the widestly known atheists in our day. His name is Richard Dawkins. Dawkins has a book called The God Delusion. Now, he makes fun of Christianity. He makes fun of, obviously, the Bible and, obviously, the coming of the Lord. Now, look at what Peter says. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, what kind of people? Scoffers. Walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? And it goes on to say that they have become willingly ignorant of this fact. And it goes on and talks about the, 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 the covered earth with a flood. Now, let me just tell you something. 
If this is true, then you would have to think maybe Dawkins, like so many others, has an answer to the dilemma of how the world came about. I want you to listen to an interesting statement about him. He was uh, awarded uh, in 1996 the uh, Humanist of the Year Award. But he said that those that believe in God in the Bible are, are, are compared to people are like the, the, the threat of AIDS or mad cow disease. He claimed that faith in God is one of the world's great evils, comparable to smallpox virus, but harder to eradicate. He believes that Christians should be shut up. Now, let me just tell you, there's a spirit of Antichrist behind this. And you're going to see this all over. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> we just read about this in the Bible. where The title of the book is called The God Delusion. We just read it a moment ago. Remember what it says. It says, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Right there in that verse is God Delusion. And notice the God Delusion, which is the title of Richard Dawkins' book, one of the best-selling books in America on atheism, is literally a fulfillment of this passage. Now, I want you to listen to his interview. Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um, by a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. What was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right, how did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, 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 no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. else. What do you think is the possibility that, there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution. It could come about in the following way. It could be said. that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but that higher intelligence if... would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. So that they... Now, I want you to think about what you just heard. This is a man who is massively interviewed around the world. He appears on almost all the talk shows. He is consulted constantly by the, the major networks. And he is looked up to and admired by atheists all over the world. But the, I don't know if you grabbed onto what was just taught. Here's a guy who denies the existence of God, but can actually come up with a concept that the earth came into the life form it did because aliens seeded the planet, okay? Now, let me just tell you, this, this is a, a teaching. It's called panspermia, and it literally means that, that it was seeded here. So they, they claim that this was, yes, okay, so there was some intelligence, but it couldn't be God because God doesn't exist. But here's where the dilemma lies. How did the bacteria get, if it came by, uh, uh, you know, some asteroid, where'd the bacteria come from? Not to mention, where did, the, where did the asteroid or any of these other things, and if it did come from aliens, where did they come from? It's not answering the question. All it's doing is stalling it to just say, well, the Bible just simply can't be true, but there's, you know, but okay, well, we... We have to admit something happened, but we don't know. But it's impossible for the Bible to be right. Okay, you're all seeing where I'm going with this?